Cambridge Preliminary English Test 4 by University of Cambridge ESOL Examinations in conjunction with Cambridge University Press. This recording is copyright. CD1 This is the Cambridge Preliminary English Test number 1. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. There are seven questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and put a tick in the box below it. Before we start, here is an example. Where did the man leave his camera? Oh no, I haven't got my camera. But you used it just now to take a photograph of the fountain. Oh, I remember. I put it down on the steps while I put my coat on. Well, let's drive back quickly. It might still be there. The first picture is correct, so there is a tick in box A. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. One. Which activity will the family do this year? We're going to try an activity holiday this year, but we all want to do something different. The children want to go cycling, but their father wants to go on a water sports holiday, you know, sailing and windsurfing, things like that. And I'd like to go walking. We all want to go together, so we've decided to let the children choose this year, and we'll choose next year. Now listen again. We're going to try an activity holiday this year, but we all want to do something different. The children want to go cycling, but their father wants to go on a water sports holiday, you know, sailing and windsurfing, things like that. And I'd like to go walking. We all want to go together, so we've decided to let the children choose this year, and we'll choose next year. Two, which is the woman's house? How will I recognize your house when I call for you, Sue? Well, it's the same as all the others in the street, but look out for a big tree. It's by the front gate and it's covered in lovely white flowers at the moment. Now listen again. How will I recognize your house when I call for you, Sue? Well, it's the same as all the others in the street, but look out for a big tree. It's by the front gate and it's covered in lovely white flowers at the moment. Three. Why will drivers have problems this morning? And on to this morning's local traffic news. Driving conditions have improved now that the early morning fog is gone. Rain is forecast for tonight, but it'll be fine during the day. The police have warned drivers to expect delays coming into town because of repairs to Victoria Bridge and advise lorries to find another route if possible. Now listen again. And on to this morning's local traffic news. Driving conditions have improved now that the early morning fog is gone. 
Rain is forecast for tonight, but it'll be fine during the day. The police have warned drivers to expect delays coming into town because of repairs to Victoria Bridge, and advised lorries to find another route if possible. Four. What time will Robin leave the house? Oh, Robin, Pete's just rung to say that he'll be here a bit later than he said. The plane's going to take off at eight o'clock now, so you don't need to check in until about quarter past seven. He said he'd be round to pick you up at half past six instead of six o'clock. Is that okay? It'll give you some more time to pack anyway. Now listen again. Oh, Robin, Pete's just rung to say that he'll be here a bit later than he said. The plane's going to take off at eight o'clock now, so you don't need to check in until about quarter past seven. He said he'd be round to pick you up at half past six instead of six o'clock. Is that okay? It'll give you some more time to pack anyway. Five. What did Simon do this morning? Oh, Simon, you haven't even washed the dishes. Have you done anything this morning? I've been really busy, Mum. I paid the window cleaner who called, and I was going to put away all the shopping you bought yesterday. But Pete rang, and he kept me talking for ages. Now listen again. Oh, Simon, you haven't even washed the dishes. Have you done anything this morning? I've been really busy, Mum. I paid the window cleaner who called, and I was going to put away all the shopping you bought yesterday. But Pete rang, and he kept me talking for ages. Six. What hasn't the girl packed yet? Have you got everything you need for your holiday? Well, I've packed my soap and toothbrush, if that's what you mean, but I can't find any toothpaste anywhere. There's probably some in the bathroom cupboard, but what about a towel? Have you remembered to pack that? Of course. Now listen again. Have you got everything you need for your holiday? Well. I've packed my soap and toothbrush, if that's what you mean, but I can't find any toothpaste anywhere. There's probably some in the bathroom cupboard, but what about a towel? Have you remembered to pack that? Of course. Seven. What has the woman just bought? What do you think? I found it in that new department store yesterday. I think it's perfect. It'll keep the sun off my face, and it'll go really well with the dress I'm wearing to the wedding. It's the same colour as my bag too. I just need a new jacket now. Now listen again. What do you think? I found it in that new department store yesterday. I think it's perfect. It'll keep the sun off my face, and it'll go really well with the dress I'm wearing to the wedding. It's the same colour as my bag too. I just need a new jacket now. That is the end of part. One. Now turn to part two, questions eight to thirteen. You will hear an interview. With Angela Morgan, who has recently flown around the world in a helicopter. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have forty-five seconds to look at the questions for part two.
Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. And today I'm talking to Angela Morgan. Angela, what made you decide to fly around the world in a helicopter? People often ask me why I decided to do it, but I'm surprised they don't ask why did you wait so long, because I'm 57 now. I'm sorry I didn't do it years ago, because it was such a wonderful experience. But the main purpose for going was to collect £500,000 for sick children by getting different companies to pay us money for each kilometre that we flew. And now everyone calls you the flying grandmother. <laughs> yes. The thing about growing older is that you don't feel any different inside. So you have to do as much as you can while you can. I'm healthy and my own children are grown up. So I was free to go. And what about preparing for the trip? Well, it took five months to plan. I was going to go with my husband, but he couldn't take time off work. Instead, I made the trip with my flying teacher, who became a great friend while she was teaching me to fly three years ago. I passed my flying test after two weeks, found it quite easy. And what was the trip like? It was really exciting flying over so many different countries. The only thing was that we weren't able to spend much time sightseeing because we only stopped to get water and to camp. We took very little with us, but we did have tents and cooking things to use at night. We had to spend two days in Thailand because of an engine problem, but that was the longest we spent anywhere. Fortunately, nothing else went wrong, so we just kept on going after that. What did you enjoy most about the trip? The most wonderful thing about flying was seeing the differences in the countryside as we flew across 26 countries in 97 days. We flew over oceans and close to mountains. Sometimes it was quite frightening, but we didn't travel when it was dark. We spent several nights camping in the desert, and the sky was just full of stars. I made a video of the trip. You'll see it in a minute. Was there anything that you missed while you were away? Well, to my surprise, I didn't miss going to work or going out to restaurants or films. The most difficult thing was sitting still all the time. I normally play tennis and swim several times a week, so I started to feel very unfit. I missed hot water and proper showers sometimes too, but not as much as I thought I would. Now listen again. And today I'm talking to Angela Morgan. Angela. What made you decide to fly around the world in a helicopter? People often ask me why I decided to do it, but I'm surprised they don't ask, why did you wait so long? Because I'm 57 now. I'm sorry I didn't do it years ago, because it was such a wonderful experience. But the main purpose for going was to collect £500,000 for sick children by getting different companies to pay us money for each kilometre that we flew. And now everyone calls you the flying grandmother. <laughs> yes. The thing about growing older is that you don't feel any different inside, so you have to do as much as you can while you can. I'm healthy, and my own children are grown up, so I was free to go. And what about preparing for the trip? Well, it took five months to plan. I was going to go with my husband, but he couldn't take time off work. Instead, I made the trip with my flying teacher, who became a great friend while she was teaching me to fly three years ago. I passed my flying test after two weeks, found it quite easy. And what was the trip like? It was really exciting flying over so many different countries. The only thing was that we weren't able to spend much time sightseeing because we only stopped to get water and to camp. We took very little with us, but we did have tents and cooking things to use at night. 
We had to spend two days in Thailand because of an engine problem, but that was the longest we spent anywhere. Fortunately, nothing else went wrong, so we just kept on going after that. What did you enjoy most about the trip? The most wonderful thing about flying was seeing the differences in the countryside as we flew across 26 countries in 97 days. We flew over oceans and close to mountains. Sometimes it was quite frightening, but we didn't travel when it was dark. We spent several nights camping in the desert and the sky was just full of stars. I made a video of the trip. You'll see it in a minute. Was there anything that you missed while you were away? Well, to my surprise, I didn't miss going to work or going out to restaurants or films. The most difficult thing was sitting still all the time. I normally play tennis and swim several times a week, so I started to feel very unfit. I missed hot water and proper showers sometimes too, but not as much as I thought I would. That is the end of part... Now turn to part 3. Questions 14 to 19. You will hear a radio announcer talking about activities at a museum called Science World. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part 3. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. This week in the local activities part of the show, we're taking a look at Science World, the new place to visit for a family day out. During your visit, you'll be able to find out about all the latest developments in science, as well as trying lots of experiments for yourself. This is no ordinary museum, I promise you. There's a program of special events, which next week includes an electricity workshop on Monday afternoon, and the chance to do some experiments with water on Wednesday morning. Of special interest is the regular Saturday evening talk. Next week, Science World welcomes a famous American scientist who is going to talk about space travel. It isn't expensive to visit Science World, with tickets priced at £3 for adults and £2 for children. Talks and other special events are extra, though, with an entrance fee of £1.75 for adults, and there are reductions for children. If you want to go to a special event or talk, then book your tickets direct from Science World on 284311 or pick them up from the tourist office. While you're at Science World, you'll be able to enjoy a snack in the Newton Cafe. It's a bit small, but the food is good. It's open all day, and it has a lovely view, because it's beside the beach. Still not sure? Well, why not give Science World a call on 284311. If you say you heard about Science World on this programme, they will send you one free ticket to next month's exhibition, which is about computers. It's suitable for families and school parties. And now, let's look at... Now listen again. This week in the local activities part of the show, we're taking a look at Science World, the new place to visit for a family day out. During your visit, you'll be able to find out about all the latest developments in science, as well as trying lots of experiments for yourself. This is no ordinary museum, I promise you. There's a programme of special events, which next week includes an electricity workshop on Monday afternoon and 
the chance to do some experiments with water on Wednesday morning. Of special interest is the regular Saturday evening talk. Next week, Science World welcomes a famous American scientist who is going to talk about space travel. It isn't expensive to visit Science World, with tickets priced at £3 for adults and £2 for children. Talks and other special events are extra, though, with an entrance fee of £1.75 for adults, and there are reductions for children. If you want to go to a special event or talk, then book your tickets direct from Science World on 284311 or pick them up from the tourist office. While you're at Science World, you'll be able to enjoy a snack in the Newton Cafe. It's a bit small, but the food is good. It's open all day, and it has a lovely view, because it's beside the beach. Still not sure? Well, why not give Science World a call on 284311. If you say you heard about Science World on this program, they will send you one free ticket to next month's exhibition, which is about computers. It's suitable for families and school parties. And now, let's look at... That is the end of part... Th now turn to part four. Questions 20 to 25. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear a conversation between a boy, Tom, and his sister, Claire, about school. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, put a tick in the box under A for yes. If it is not correct, Put a tick in the box under B for no. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part four. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Guess what, Claire? I've been chosen for the school swimming team. What do you think about that? Oh, well, I think it's great, but I'm sure Dad won't say the same when he finds out. You know how he feels about you doing all this sport and not doing your schoolwork? You'll never get all your homework done, especially if you have to travel to other schools for competitions. It won't make any difference. I can do my homework on the bus. Honestly, Tom, you know what your teacher said to Dad last term? You've got a good brain, and you could improve your marks at school if you spent a bit less time thinking about sport. Sometimes I wonder if you ever think about anything else at all. Well, I work hard at everything I like doing, not just sport. I mean, take maths, for example. OK, it's your life. But you know you have your examinations next year for college. And at most of the good colleges, they have great sports facilities. If you aren't accepted then you'll have to find a job, and that won't be easy. Oh, I've thought about that already. I'm thinking of applying to do sports science at college, and someone told me some of the colleges often take students with lower marks if they're good at sport. Well, I wouldn't depend on what one of your friends says if I were you. For your information, it wasn't one of my friends. It was a teacher at school. I'm only trying to help. And anyway, it doesn't really matter what I say. It's Dad you have to worry about. Yes, OK. I know you're right about that. I'll have a chat with him tonight and explain things again. Good luck. Now listen again. Guess what, Claire? I've been chosen for the school swimming team. What do you think about that? Oh, well, I think it's great, but I'm sure Dad won't say the same when he finds out. You know how he feels about you doing all this sport and not doing your schoolwork? You'll never get all your homework done, especially if you have to travel to other schools for competitions. It won't make any difference. I can do my homework on the bus. Honestly, Tom, you know what your teacher said to Dad last term? 
You've got a good brain, and you could improve your marks at school if you spent a bit less time thinking about sport. Sometimes I wonder if you ever think about anything else at all. Well, I work hard at everything I like doing, not just sport. I mean, take maths, for example. Okay, it's your life. But you know you have your examinations next year for college. And at most of the good colleges, they have great sports facilities. If you aren't accepted, then you'll have to find a job, and that won't be easy. Oh, I've thought about that already. I'm thinking of applying to do sports science at college, and someone told me some of the colleges often take students with lower marks if they're good at sport. Well, I wouldn't depend on what one of your friends says if I were you. For your information, it wasn't one of my friends. It was a teacher at school. I'm only trying to help, and anyway, it doesn't really matter what I say. It's Dad you have to worry about. Yes, okay. I know you're right about that. I'll have a chat with him tonight and explain things again. Good luck. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet.